everybody. My name is Leah. I'm with the Village Tea Shop on Love Lane in Mattituck, located at 105 Love Lane. Um, the business has been here since 2001, and the current owner, Michael Affetato, uh, took over approximately five years ago. So here at the Village Tea Shop, uh, we have a we have counter service, um, and we have a very large selection of cheeses from all over the world. Um, we also offer uh, uh, lots of different types of charcuterie meats, um, soppressata, uh, smoked salmon um, that, that we can slice for you at your request. Um, today we thought it would be fun uh, to show you how we make one of our holiday platters. So uh, the Kutjog New Suffolk Library has come to videotape us, or I guess that's maybe an old-fashioned word, videotape, record us to uh, show you how we make one of our holiday platters here. So um, this holiday season, um, we are offering two types of platters to our customers, um, as well as custom platters, which are available year-round. So we name them, and the smaller one is available, uh, it's called the Yuletide, and the larger one, which feeds approximately seven to ten people, and then the Dickens feeds approximately twelve to fifteen people. So we thought it would be fun to make the larger one. So one of the first things we do is make sure we have some um, grapes. Grapes and cheese, they're just a perfect match, perfect pair together, and it helps uh, create some visual um, focus to the platter and some, uh, some dimension. So I'm going to put these guys over here. Sometimes we use green, sometimes we use purple, really depending on what looks good at the store. And then we are going to put on one, two, three, four, five cheeses. The cheeses that we select are typically a nice variety and range of, of types of milk and types of cheese. There's so many different types of cheeses out there. We've got Goudas, Cheddars, uh, Breeze, um, Pecorinos, Parmesans. Uh, so we, we try on the platters to put crowd-pleasing cheeses that are interesting, but definitely not boring. Um, we, we want to create some interest and at least have them trying, having uh, our customers try some new cheeses as well to expand their palate. So, one of the items that we're doing this year for the holiday season, which we did for Thanksgiving, and it was such a success that we decided that we'll do it for Christmas this year, is uh, we decided to make some 1970s cheese balls. Uh, a twist on them, at least. So, we have um, Raven that is in charge of making the cheese balls, and she has about three different kinds that she makes, but typically they're covered in dried fruits, herbs, and then the it's made from goat cheese. We mix a little bit of cream cheese with it to make it more malleable. And then in the center, we put a large dollop of uh, either fig jam or a uh, mango habanero jam, and then the outside we roll in dried nuts, herbs, um, and dried fruits. But it creates a visual interest and they're just delicious. So that's one of the items that we'll be putting on the platter today. This particular one is a uh, goat cheese ball. Um, in the interior is a pear, pear apple cinnamon uh, jam covered with cranberries, dried cranberries. So we'll put that right in the center. Then we have here, um, this is called Honey Bee Goat Gouda, and this cheese is made from 100% uh, goat's milk, and it's from the Netherlands. So they're using, they're using uh, Gouda cultures, just like they would with like an aged cow's milk Gouda. However, the fact that it is a goat's milk cheese uh, really creates a, a completely different flavor profile than the aged Goudas that most of us are uh, accustomed to. 
So what we like to do very often is to keep the rinds because they're colorful um, and, and they give a little visual interest to the platter. And it also helps people if, if they get a platter like this and they want to get this cheese, they're going to recognize that rind. They'll say, oh yeah, that's the one, you know, because we do have a few different types of goat gouda style cheeses. This uh, particular one happens to be the honey bee goat gouda uh, and it actually has a little touch of honey added to it. So, but um, the goat goudas are interesting in the sense that they ha they do have sort of a underlying sweetness to them um, and saltiness. So it's almost like a sweet and savory uh, combination there. So being very careful not to cut my digit off, <laughs> we're going to just cut the rind off here, just like this. All right, let's see. Let's see if we got this. Maybe a little bit more on the other side. Okay. Almost there. There we go. Okay, so now we're just left with this little, cute little compartment there. Okay, so for this, um, I often like to just put it maybe on an angle like that. There's really no right or wrong. This is where your inner artist can come out and you can decide um, what's balanced to you, you know. So I'm going to cube this up into smaller pieces, especially when you're, um, you know, we're, we are dealing with holidays at a time when you know, a lot of things are going on and we don't want people, we don't want people hovering over the cheese platter. We want them to come, put it on their plate and get away from the cheese platter. No heavy breathing. <laughs> so in that sense, we do like to make it easy. People can, you know, everything's pretty much bite-sized pieces, you know. Cube these to little, tiny little squares. So we do have uh, the platters that are available. Um, they are available uh, to order on the website. You can see pictures on the website. You can pay on the website if you like. They're all there. If you don't like to use the computer, it's okay. You can call us. We'll talk to you on the phone. We're doing a lot of uh, pickup orders as well. Um, if you know what you like, just tell us. We'll get it ready for you. Take the credit card over the phone. And that's it. So this is one of my favorites. This one's, this one's from England. It's called Huntsman. And it's a double Gloucester cheddar. And it's almost like a, a layer cake. It's uh, striped with Stilton, English Stilton. But visually speaking, this adds a real pop to the platter, especially when you've got like dark purples. And it tastes good. And it, address, it addresses the fact that you may want a little bit of blue and you also want cheddar, you get both. So I think I'm just gonna put this guy right there. We usually don't put too much blue on the platters unless someone specifically requests, requests it. Okay, this is another one of my favorites. Uh, this is the Rosemary Manchego. Manchego is from Spain. It's 100% cow's milk. Um, this particular one has been aged uh, approximately eight to nine months. So sheep's milk has the uh, highest level of lipids uh, compared to the other uh, milks, um, which is probably why I like it the most. <laughs> it's got a lot of flavor. So we're going to do the same thing here because the rind of the manchego with rosemary, I don't really like to cut the rind on the platters because then the, the rosemary tends to get all over the place, tends to get on all the other cheeses. And we don't want rosemary 
on all the cheeses. We just want it on this one. Uh, and also too, it's got such a great texture. I think it's, you know, nice to keep it intact like that. Oops. We got a little crack here. It's no problem. Okay, so we are going to put the rosemary with manchego there. And this time, instead of cutting it up, we're gonna do a series of just putting the cheese to the side and just doing simple triangle wedges. This is a common shape that we use on the platter. Sometimes we fan it out. You know, it's easy for people to eat it like this. You can pick it up with your fingers. Okay, and then when we put it when we put it in here, I think it's fun to just kind of like alternate alternate the triangles, kind of give it a little bit of depth, you know, a little bit of shading and darkness in there. this last guy in there. Okay. Okay. And then I think we're going to take a little bit of fresh rosemary. We usually always have some herbs within the shop just so that we can decorate the platters with them, um, especially at Christmas time. We love to put rosemary on there. So, we got the rosemary manchego on. Now, we're gonna clean up a little bit. Okay, so, the next cheese that we are going to do is the Wensleydale with cranberry. We love to use this one on the holiday, at the holidays time because just the coloring. So Wensleydale uh, is located in England, and for it to be, it's a protected name, the Wensleydale uh, cheese. It's a protected name, and it must come from that region in order to be called Wensleydale. Um, you can get it uh, in, with different fruits within it. You can get cranberry. Uh, we also have, uh, we've gotten it with apricot. And for this one, it's very crumbly and dry. So to avoid crumbles is pointless because it's going to crumble. And once you realize that and go with it, you're better off. It's like having curly hair. Just go with it. <laughs> Don't fight against it. So we're just gonna break it up into little bite-sized pieces. Make it easy for people to pick up with tongues, not their fingers. And then, so if I plan this out a little bit more, I probably would have put a cheese ball with maybe a different type of fruit on the outside because now I'm starting to see I've got a lot of red. But that's okay, once we decorate it all, there'll be enough contrast there and it'll look great. Okay. We have here just some fresh cranberries. We wet them with just a little bit of water. You could also use lemon juice if you like. Sprinkle with some uh, sugar. Like this. I'm just gonna mix them up. And it looks like beautiful snow, snow covered cranberries. So we can use that for a decoration. Um, now it's time to place some of the meat. So I'm just gonna set this aside for a minute. Um, we have a few different types of meat here. We have, first of all, let me look at my picture here. Okay, here is speck. Speck um, has 
It's it's actually from uh, Michael. You said it was from Italy, right, Spec? Yeah. So it's from northern Italy. Um, it has sort. It is from like the sort of the uh, belly region, and uh, it has a taste that kind of kind of tastes like bacon. Yeah, it's like a less fatty um, bacon type of flavor. I like to roll this up, make little make little cigars out of it. And I think we're gonna put these guys maybe maybe over here. It's uh, it's a cured meat similar to you know prosciutto or serrano. We like to cut we like to cut all of our meats very thin here. If any of you want to come into the shop and if you want to make your own platter, um, we can certainly help you pick out a nice well-rounded selection of cheese and uh, share with you some of the things that we use to decorate the platters and the sides that we put on. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. And it really is. It's like doing. It's like uh, doing artwork. It's very relaxing. If you give yourself enough time to do it before your guests arrive, <laughs> if you don't. Then it's not relaxing. <laughs> um, I didn't receive any special training in, to do this. Um, you don't need it either. I. In my spare time, I often will go online. I love to look um, on Pinterest at different platters. And through that, and just looking at other people's photos, you learn different ways of, you know, cutting things, slicing things, presenting things. And, uh, you know, all of us share here with each other. There's one other gal here that um, makes the platters, uh, Raven. Her and I are the ones that normally make them. So we, we make a lot of platters, so we just have these, they're basically just balsam wood uh, round platters. We have square ones as well, uh, which are relatively inexpensive. Um, at home, you probably would have a nicer platter that you could put it on. Um, we very often will have customers bring us the platters that they would like us to put the to put the meat and cheese on, and that's not a problem. We can certainly do that. There's some beautiful platters out there, at home goods or, you know. And I imagine most people will be spending the holidays at home, cooking at home this season. Maybe maybe with less with less people, which on the bright side means that you can get some higher quality food to eat. You have more, you know, you have more of a budget to spend on food. All right, so I think we'll just leave those aside. All right, so the next one we are going to do is the Spanish chorizo. This comes in a log about yay long, this wide. It looks very spicy, but you know, in my opinion, it's 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 really not that spicy. But it, it gives a nice, colorful pop. Uh, it is pork, just like the spec is. So very often, I'll just fold it like this, just kind of layer it. You know, fluff it up a little bit. Make it look really bountiful. Okay, thank you. 
All right, so we're gonna put some of these guys over here. The pig is a very generous animal. <laughs> we've got Serrano, we've got Prosciutto, Sopressata, Speck. I think the, the only, oh, Iberico, we sell Iberico here, which is a, it's a, it's a black, uh, specially bred pig um, that only eats acorns. That's a higher end, uh, higher end oh, 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 meat that's similar similar to prosciutto but drastically different it's it's, it's a very buttery nutty really quite delicious the only beef that we have here that we sell is a uh, brasaula everything else is pork all right so we got that all right i think that's coming along Okay, now, now we're gonna do the soprasata. Okay, so the soprasata is from Italy. Um, I personally don't like to chew on, chew on the uh, casing. So any customer that orders a platter that I work on, um, I peel it first just to make it a little bit more tender and we slice it super thin. I may have sliced this a little too thin, but I don't know. My feeling is the more surface area, the better, better it tastes. Um, if you're kosher um, or you're a vegetarian, we can also make these platters um, without, either without meat or without pork. We'll just bump up the, the volume of cheese and, and other side items, or maybe throw in some crackers or fresh baguette. We even have cheeses, uh, for, for those who are vegetarian, we have a pretty large selection of cheeses that are vegetarian uh, in the sense that when they separate the curd and the whey, in the old days, they would use uh, what's called rennet, which is an enzyme from the stomach of a calf. And they still use that today. The enzyme separates the curd from the whey and allows you to drain the whey and create the cheese. But now there's a lot of companies that are using um, vegetable rennet, or another word, if you see on the ingredients, uh, microbial rennet, um, that is a plant-based alternative substitute to uh, the animal rennet. Although a lot of vegetarians do eat cheese that is made with traditional rennet, um, either maybe they don't know or they don't want to know. <laughs> but we are getting increasingly a lot more customers who ask for it. People are more aware now, you know? And I, some people say you can taste the difference between the cheeses that are made with traditional rennet versus vegetarian rennet. I personally can't, but um, I, I guess if I really put my mind to it and tasted them next to each other, maybe I would, but. Right now what I'm cutting is fig cake. And this is basically uh, just anise, figs, and almonds. Uh, they must use like a pneumatic press or something to, to get this in the round. It reminds me of uh, stolen in the sense that this stuff never goes bad. And it comes in a big round like this and fig and cheese together, as many of you probably already know, is a wonderful combination. My favorite combination with fig actually is blue cheese. That's a husband and wife right there. Or wife and wife or husband and husband. <laughs> Whatever you are is fine. Okay, all right, 
So, put a little fig around there. Okay, what is the next item? Now, now we are going to find a little place for these Marcona almonds. Marcona almonds are, they're actually fried and salted. They're from Spain. If you've never tried a Marcona almond, you need to because they are very different from an almond that you just buy in the grocery store for baking. Um, they're super crunchy, highly addictive, um, and they just taste magical on a cheese board. You need a little bit of crunch. Okay, so we got to figure out where we're going to put these guys. I think I'm going to put them, ooh, decisions, decisions. I think I'm going to put them here on the sides of these little spaces here. You know, when we're, when we're making these, these platters, we don't like to have a lot of negative space. You know, we want them to look bountiful and almost overflowing. So sometimes, even if I could fit a, a higher price platter on a larger actual, you know, larger actual platter, sometimes I will put it on a smaller one anyway, just because I think it looks nice, really full and lush, you know? Okay, so I think, So typically uh, on our platters, we include some kind of jam. We need to have something sweet. Um, so we either use a mango habanero jam or we'll use a fig jam. Um, I think for this one, I'm gonna use the mango habanero because we already have a lot of fig going on here. So I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put the, the jam right here. Actually, maybe I should put it there. Mm, no, I think I'm gonna put it there. Unless, unless um, my customer does not want us to, we typically, on all of the platters that we make, we always put dried fruit. I'm actually slicing right now dried Turkish figs. This is what they look like. They're delicious, they're, they're very fibrous, but the inside is just, it's just beautiful. And it looks great on a platter. So I'm going to put, I'm gonna put some fig actually. I'm gonna push this back a little bit. You can move things around, it's okay. You can change your mind. No one's gonna know. <laughs> I'm gonna put the figs I think right here. I like to cut them up a little bit. They are very chewy. You don't really wanna put a whole one in your mouth especially if you're trying to talk to someone at the same time. Okay. All right. And then sometimes I like to also just put I like to have them whole like this. Just cuz they they look very nice whole. Or at least cut in half like that. Except I think I think I'm going to push this back. And maybe put them over here. Three. Okay. So here we have some gorgonzola olives. Super salty. Great for martinis. So we're going to put some of these olives on here. And we also have some roasted tomatoes. The roasted tomatoes are very different than sun-dried tomatoes. They don't, they don't need to be reconstituted with liquid. Uh, they're, they're soft, they're juicy, and they're marinated in olive oil with herbs. Um, they're great on sandwiches. They're great with just bread. All right, so. All right, so we just need to find a spot for this, which may be a challenge. Just put them right there. Okay. Okay, now we have cornichon. These are just little pickles. They're called cornichon, they're from France. 
So we typically put those on all of our platters as well. I think I'm going to put this, I'm going to put the cornichons by the meat. And usually when I'm deciding where to put something, if I, you know, if I have a lot of orange in, in one section or a lot of red or a lot of purple, I try to put it on the other side just to kind of balance things out so it doesn't look lopsided where all the colors, the same colors are on the, on one side. Okay. What else do we have? Okay, so now we have some dried Turkish apricots. Very sweet. It's like nature's candy. That's what we call it, nature's candy. And sometimes I like to put these guys like actually in the cheese just to give it a little pop of color. Especially because we're running out of room on this platter already. Okay. Okay, so then the final thing that we need to do, well actually not the final, but almost the final thing, is we gotta find a little place for these uh, cranberries which I don't expect people are really going to eat, but visually they're, they are very pretty. So we just need to find a little section here for those. Hmm, I think I'm going to, I think I'm actually going to put them here. A little bit of holiday cheer. Maybe put some over here in the corner. A little bit right there. Okay. I think that's plenty. And then we've got some herbs. We have rosemary and thyme, but you can choose whatever you like to put on there. So. I feel like the green will look nice against the, the red purple of the grape. trim it a little bit. Je vous souhaite des bonnes fêtes de la part of the village cheese shop on Love Lane. Joyeux Noël and enjoy the beautiful cheeses from our little humble house to yours.